Just got out of the water. And without further ado, the roast of Orion Winkler. And I'm your first host, Robert Croson. Oh my god. How are we doing tonight? Great. Very good. We've got a huge show in store for you, all of our good friends, some new, some old. And here is Ian Heath to assist. Before I introduce our guest of honor, I'd like to introduce all the people that respect and admire him. But since there's nobody here that does, I'll just introduce him. The man who can eat coal and shit diamonds. The man that has no equal because everybody's better. Orion Winkler. First to the stage. Looking good tonight. Mr. Kyle Kunish. You got this kid. Good evening, everybody. Yes. Nice chair. As you all know, we're here for one thing and one thing only. The man, the myth, the legend, the androgynous, Orion Winkler. <laughs> Anyway, Orion and I have been friends for a whole bunch of days and even some nights. And I still feel I don't know him quite as well as I could. It's all his fault, but being the gentleman that I am, I planned a day for just me and the old frog, Romeo and Julian. <laughs> this is how our day would unfold. 5.45 a.m. I wake up the ogre with a cooter. A John cooter. Once he has arisen to the sounds of America, we choke down full glasses of raw eggs to obtain the perfect bowel of its lubrication. <laughs> we begin with stretches. 6.15 a.m. We begin a chatty jog around the back bay and discuss politics and Richard's body hair. I must stop frequently to pee and quietly cry in the bushes. I mustn't let him see. The day is early. 8.15 a.m. Who knew regurgitated eggs could still fry up on the sidewalk? I have a second breakfast. 9.15 a.m. Holy fuck, we get up way too early. I suggest a siesta in the park, and we sleep like lambs. Eleven fifteen a.m. It's time for lunch. Cucumber sandwiches and tennis on the promenade. While my testicles are marinating like fermented cheese balls, I have a strange suspicion you are baby powder fresh. <laughs> you magnificent bastard. I take the match 500 love. 3 p.m. We tell each other our favorite color. Blue. <laughs> At 1 p.m., I'm starting to run out of conversation topics, so I awkwardly stare at your face hole while you tell me about the time you forded a mountain or some shit. I'm beginning to see why we don't do this often. 4 p.m., we hit the gym hard. I'm spotting you, you're spotting me, spots everywhere. The fucking cheetah convention. I tell many lies about you to strangers. You seem concerned when everybody gives you the dick eye on the way out. <laughs> 6 p.m. Starcraft 2, bitches. We go ham, but are sadly obliterated by young Korean boys. I suggest Thai food. You suggest I shut the fuck up and blame the defeat on me. I give you the eye of the tiger, and you quickly apologize. We move on. 7 p.m. Dinner and a movie. Whatever. 9.45 p.m. We don skin-tight costumes and take to the streets to pummel bad guys until it's time to go home and have sex. <laughs> you know, with other people, probably. <laughs> well, Owe, I hope you enjoyed our day together, because these bastards are going to tear you apart. Yeah! In 
my introductions. Mr. Matthew. Oh, I'm going right now? Yeah. Ma Matt's going there. Yeah, Matt's going now. Hey guys, my name's Matt. Some of you may know me. Know me? Hey, Ellie. You ready? Anyway, um, it's good to be here. I think I'm gonna do a really good job. In fact, you could say I've been getting pumped all, all day. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of you guys, if one of you could tape this for me, it'd be really awesome. Uh, could you focus it on Ellie's mouth? That's the part I want to see. Um, so everybody's always saying that Ellie's a really chill guy. And I'm always like, God, somebody should get that guy a sweater. Oh, God. Um, Oh, yeah. I like you, man, and I don't want to roast you too hard, so I made you this. I figured it would help brace you for all the burns to come. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Put it on. I don't have enough space for all the things I need to hold. Um, all right, here we go. So, since this is a roast, I brought along some tongs for roasting. Uh, I was also hoping maybe I could toss your salad later, Ellie. Really. <laughs> I knew I was going to nail that joke, so I brought this. <laughs> Just kidding, I knew Emerson was going to be here and that he probably wanted to get hammered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Are we even mad on one stage? That's a fucking dangerous combination. Two sexy beasts up here. So I brought a towel. I guarantee you some of you are going to be wet by the end of this. I got a lot of things in my box, but if you're wondering what I can put in your box later, see here. Uh, oh yeah, it's your birthday, so I brought you along something to remind you of your brother. I didn't think he was going to be here. You get it? Uh, because of his name. I hope that that's not insulting. Uh, so, not that he needs help getting sauced, but uh, Emerson's still here. I brought you some hot sauce. Yeah. It's also funny because it burns uh, alcoholism. Uh, I'm lost. Um, let's see here. It's insulting. I know it's hard being a surfer in Maine, so oh yeah, I made you one of these. I figured you could hang ten whenever you want. Uh, Emerson, if that last joke is still burning, you could probably rub some of this on there. Roasts are supposed to be mean, so I figured the best slash meanest thing I could do would be to frame you for murder. <laughs> it said you for murder. Um, uh, so Rich is here, and as I'm sure everybody knows, he's been taking medical classes, which is awesome. Uh, maybe he can help you after I break all your funny bones. <laughs> it's called the humorous, buddy. You'll thank me come text time. <laughs> I made you this last one with, with, with wow, with wishful thinking, Owe. <laughs> Figured maybe later you'd be horny and want a spoon. <laughs> I don't know, this thing kind of reminds me of you. It doesn't make sense, it's fake as fuck, it doesn't work, and I want to blow it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. These oh, things are supposed to be mean. Birthday, so I got him a get well soon card. I hope it helps. Anyway, I hope you get laid tonight. Oh, wow. I want to that back.
Matt. Come on out of here, Matt. Home up the works. Yeah. I'm gonna show you a little thing I've been working on. Jim, look. Woo! See how the swells today I'm gonna take on with all the strength that I build in the gym tonight. All right, so now, take a moment here to uh, thank you all for coming to uh, my birthday last weekend. <laughs> my roast. I got roasted very, very hard, especially by you. I know. Didn't even show up. The best roast. That's the best maneuver ever. So, uh, yeah. Enjoyed seeing all your faces on your Facebook. <laughs> Time hop. Time's long past. Wow, I really got the ticker going on those uh, 35s. Whoa. <sighs> all right. So now we got uh, another, another comic coming here. Mr. Jared Anderson. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for having me. I know you had a lot to do with this. A lot of beautiful ladies here tonight. <laughs> and men. Let's hear it for our char tender. He's, he's my kind of guy. He's, he's, he's a really great guy, you know? The company he works for is responsible for making the beer that made my girlfriend Sarah Mead wake up in the wee hours of the morning the other night in the woods behind our tent. <laughs> Your secret's safe from me, Sarah. <laughs> Love you, baby. <clears throat> but now to the man here himself. Orion defies death <laughs> with every single adventure he takes. Much like Emerson, but different reasons. Un unrelated. <laughs> Orion puts his sweaty, hairless life on the line to push the envelope with extreme sports everywhere. He once single-handedly kayaked up the side of a mountain on an isolated island deep in the Pacific Ocean. Upon arriving at the summit of the peak, Orion pulled down his board shorts Urinated a great yellow deluge that the local children immediately dubbed Nua Kula Kohoa, which roughly translates to Great Golden River. Look it up, I did. And after impregnating every female from each species on the island, he unceremoniously left, beckoning to the call of the wild and innovation. This guy. As a young boy, he once suckled an entire litter of wolf pups with his own nipples, thus restoring biological diversity to an already stressed and delicate ecosystem. <laughs> Orion went back in time and made love to my grandmother. <laughs> so she could know just once what it was like to make love to a real man. Sorry, Pat Pat. I love you, bud. Rest in peace. Ugh. Orion always returns dildos in the condition he finds them clean as a whistle. Orion
Brian has inspired more men and women to live better, cleaner lives than Jesus. Jesus was fucking ugly. You know it, I know it. <laughs> Speaking of a real turd burglar, Andrew Batson's here. <laughs> Ladies, he's a sensitive man. You should give him a chance. You <laughs> should all really think about giving him a chance, though. <laughs> Got you, buddy. Also here, Emerson Clark. Oh, uh, here we go. Emerson, I didn't know a face could grow pussy hair. Oh, sorry. Emerson looks like Milky Chance, or as I like to call him, Milky Chance. Robert's here. Robert Croson. He's been he's been killing it tonight, hasn't he? I see you. <laughs> Robert, it's been a real treat these past few years. Watching you blossom into a beautiful flower. Seriously though, you look like the homosexual butt baby of Billy Idol and Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> you look like gay rock and four, you know you do. Uh Back to Owie. <laughs> Owie wants to fuse the nuclear bomb using his pectorals and his glutes. <laughs> Unreported. He could, he could end the war in the Middle East if he just admitted that he wrote the Quran. I know you did it. <laughs> just do it. And in closing, Orion is classy as fuck. He loves wine. <laughs> he drinks a nice rosé. They call it brosé. Oh, well, that was something. That was great. I'm liking your chair so far. It looks like a gay peacock. Uh, before I say anything stupid, I'm going to introduce the guy that's going to say the stupidest things. Emerson Clark. and thank you to Oran for picking some of the most beautiful groomsmen who have all had beautiful speeches so far. I'd also like to thank the groom for having me as his best man for the most special day of his life. I would have never thought I would be the one he chose first and it's honestly tough for me. Thank you so much. Ian? wherever you may be, behind me. There he is. Thank you so much for hosting this beautiful ceremony and selling me weed. <laughs> You're alone with the best green thing Oli could have ever asked for. Robert? Where do I start with you, my friend? I'm so proud of your newfound sobriety. <laughs> know that if you ever need someone to talk to you, I'm always there for you, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Jared? Hey, bud. There he is. Hey, I hope someday you find that nature you've been so desperately trying to find. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, everybody, you all might not know this, but our good friend Terry recently got married. Uh -huh. Let's all give him and his lovely wife Esme a round of applause. Hey. Congratulations, Terry. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain, Alex, 
I'll be your first mate any day of the week. Keep writing that book of yours. I know it'll be a bestseller someday. <laughs> Daryl. Yeah. Where are you at? Yeah. First of all, let me thank you so much for giving me a place to live in your lovely, lovely home. I hope we can create some truly unforgettable memories together. <laughs> May your band someday go on to play Wembley Stadium. Aww. That's nice. <laughs> Richie! <laughs> He's always been there for me since we met in high school. And I hope you never lose you for my life. I'll never forget off ripping dorm kids with you. Do you get it? It's, yeah, it's not it. funny. <laughs> Make sure you all tip your hands to your bartender, Charlie. He just recently bought a house and we all know he could use a couple, couple extra bucks. And now on to <laughs> not the end of the hour. The real reason we are all here. The newly off the market man of my dreams, Orion Marshall Winkley. <laughs> Let me make this brief and tell you a story about how I came to meet such an amazing human being. I was walking down the street in Freiburg, and then there was smoke pouring out of uh, one of the apartment buildings and I ran over to see what was causing all the smoke. A third story was ablaze and three young kids were leaning out of the window to get away from the smoke. Thank you. <laughs> I yelled for help and before I could finish the work, a ripped young blonde stallion came running past me without hesitation into the building. We just, oh, I'm not fucking lost, man. <laughs> Into the building without a hesitation, blah, 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 blah. Nervously, I waited for him to get out of the building, which he did with all three children under his shoulders and two dogs under his arms. He put everyone down, and before getting his name, he was gone faster than he arrived. This is why this man who sits before you deserves to be happy. He didn't save those children and those dogs for the glory only because someone was in need of help. Wow. Good night, my sweet Prince of Maine. You can Oh my God! He's so Let's give a large round of applause to Mr. Clark. Woo! He's been dreading that all day. So, I want to take a minute to explain something. I announced a year uh, sobriety challenge for myself about 12 days ago. But, you know, yeah, I don't know if I have a problem. And being here with all you lovely people, and especially, thank you, especially when only the occasion really speaks for itself. You, sir, will, well, till the wheels fall off, sorry. I wish I could say one year sobriety down the drain. It would have, it would have had way more buzz to it. <laughs> All right. Ever you know, since Billy supports you, shaking it up. Uh, I know. Without further ado, Daryl Foster. Yeah. I had no idea. Shit, I'm shirtless up here. Somebody just fucking whistle or get sexy or something. God damn. Father Zeus watched from the skies. <laughs> 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 
At age two, when, parent, when his parents took him for a walk, his neighbors thought they had purchased some kind of child-sized robotic Ken doll. The doll pooped little other Ken dolls and could dunk a basketball. Soon after little Oe started pooping Ken dolls, some random Asian men began swimming around the ocean and harvesting them. They sold them back to America, and out of the deal, Oe got a Toyota. Uh, they told him it was a Ferrari. He still thinks it's a Ferrari, but you can't rape Barbies in a Ferrari. Thank you, thank you. This is a roast, correct? Because everybody's been really fucking nice. <laughs> At age seven, Oe's mother took a photo of him. The photo ended up in Fabio's hands, and he then spent a tremendous amount of money uh, on surgical procedures on his face. <laughs> when, uh, when Oe works out... Just kidding, he doesn't have to work out. Are you fucking serious? He was born in this way. <laughs> oh, he was never great at school, it's a fact. He was never great at school. Uh, the problem was multiple choice questions. Uh, whenever he saw a, saw a B, he would circle it for bra. And whenever he saw a C, he was cha. <laughs> Given the choice of surfing or sex, Oe would choose being an idiot. <laughs> Given the choice of straight sex or gay sex, Oe would choose to masturbate in a mirror. That's not gay. Is that gay? Is that gay? When Oe enters a bathroom and chooses the stall instead of the urinal, and then he begins to pee, everyone thinks, well, one, he has a tiny dick, or... Two, his tiny dick is in the shape of a Ken doll. <laughs> the Asians are really curious about what that answer is. <laughs> oh, he, uh, oh, he has his own set of weights at his house. He's got his own set of weights. He, he'll tell you that it's because he doesn't want to embarrass all the weaklings that go to the gym. But the real reason is that they're uh, custom made and they're shaped like penises. <laughs> Have you ever seen a good throat workout? Yes. Uh, as you can tell by the chair, which has kind of gone limp on us. <laughs> oh, we once auditioned for the late night gay TV series, Game of Cocks. Uh, his upper half got the lead role. <laughs> when Oe gets hard, no one notices. <laughs> Like Harry Potter, oh, he didn't choose his wand, it chose him. <laughs> Unlike Harry Potter, oh, he has no friends. <laughs> See, that's a perfect roast joke right now. Everybody laughs and then they go, oh, shit, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> At age 11, oh, his balls dropped. Scientists are still bewildered why he has no pubic hair. <laughs> this is where it gets a little raunchy. Are you guys all with me out there? Uh, we are aware that Oe lost his virginity his freshman year of high school to a teacher. Uh, we are also aware that he couldn't sit down for weeks. <laughs> No one likes it when Oe spends too much time on the beach. We prefer him pale, like a baby, like a virgin angel baby with little wings. We, we like him like a baby. <laughs> to preserve his youth and good looks, Oe goes to the zoo to feed baby animals. He uh, puts them in his masculine palm and reaches out, and as they get close, he rips their fucking head off and eats their blood. <laughs> When Oe returned from Hawaii, he was calling himself Jaguar Panther Paw Penis or something like that. Uh, but it's stupid, right? I mean, it's like, dude, you, you're fucking Jack. Just keep your mouth shut. You'll be fine. <laughs> a... 
I'm doing a Jimmy Fallon right now. I'm the funniest person ever, right? Is it coincidence that Owie's name is Orion? Named after a star for which so many cultures obsessed. Yes, it is a fucking coincidence. The guy's a fucking idiot. Look at all of his hick friends out here. <laughs> but seriously, Owie, 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 you, you shorten your name from Orion to Owie. But I, I was doing the math, and they're, they're both two syllables. Uh, so... Is that just because you couldn't spell it? You needed like an O and an E instead of the Orion. Anyways, anyways, anyways. <laughs> on a on a bigger on a bigger uh, thing of all, we fucking love Ellie, and thank you for enduring all of my ass and shit up here. Thank you very much. so much behind your back. <laughs> it's truly an honor to be doing this in person. <laughs> your chiseled jawline and homosexual tendencies have provided us with so many laughs and uncomfortable encounters over the years. <laughs> Orion has an unlimited giddy schoolboy-esque level of energy that is almost alarming. <laughs> it's alarming in the sense that it literally can wake you up at 4 a.m., the hour that he starts his day every day. <laughs> Trust me, I used to live with him. He'd begin ready for his, most likely for life, baking career at Whole Foods. All the while making his high-pitched noises. Hardly able to contain his excitement for another day to begin. Uh, for you guys who don't know the noise I'm talking about, it's kind of like a... Uh, woo! 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 <laughs> and it's always for no fucking reason. Anyway... Orion is easily one of my best friends, and we have been close our entire lives. Blue! There was always something special about strapping on an oxygen tank and heading up to Oe's house for the weekend. As a child, I have many fond memories of trying to survive at the Winkler house. There are always so many var variables. Will we have enough firewood to survive the night? Will we successfully bring down a large enough animal to feed everybody? Will the generator fail, leaving us vulnerable to the mountain wildlife? <laughs> Life at the Winklers was a direct passage out of the Oregon Trail, and I learned many a life's hardship up there. On the other side of the coin, it was always such a pleasure to have Orion at my house. It always warmed my heart to see Owie lay his eyes on an actual TV. He was just so fascinated by the technology. I remember that he would spend hours tinkering with the buttons trying to talk back to the magic people <laughs> that were talking about from the inside of the device. So many times I had to remind him that they were not real people. But I think he's got it now. Bro, All those hours he spent playing StarCraft online has brought him up to speed rather <laughs> Uh, but TV and radio waves aren't the only waves that fascinate our friend Oe. <laughs> Within the past few years, he's acquired a healthy appetite for surfing, too. I have to say, watching him surf is very stunning. Uh, his virtually hairless body just glides through the water. <laughs> it's, it's like Brad Pitt riding on the back of a dolphin. <laughs> but let's be honest here. The only reason we have given Oe so much shit is because we're jealous. Not just jealous, but also angry. Angry about how many times Orion's physique has fooled us all from behind. It's frustrating being best friends with someone who is constantly making you question your sexuality. Well, jokes aside, bud, I love you and I'm so stoked to have given you the chance to have me as one of your best friends. <laughs> Surf on my pin dog.
got some shit right there. Someone can help me. Richie fucking T! Woo! <laughs> Ricky! No more. No more for Richie T. Yeah, yeah, yeah! That's enough! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, may I introduce the most brutal section. Oh god. <laughs> Terry Classy. Oh, you're gonna move that mic, bro. I keep it in your hand. Put it right in front of you, huh? Sorry, guys, just uh, trying to tweet this live. <laughs> Gash tag, always asshole. Tweet. <laughs> 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 Hey, thanks everyone for turning out. Uh, special thanks to Oe uh, for coming tonight. He's already come two times. Uh, sort of known for that. Um, I wanted to start with an anecdote. Uh, everyone's been talking about, you know, lots of funny jokes, fabrications. Uh, here's something that's real. Um, Oe's ex-girlfriend from high school. Oh. Cut. Uh, TV. Uh, told me one time Oe came while they were making out. There's no punchline. That just happened. And I believe it. No, but seriously, everyone spent a lot of time and effort, you know, tearing down Oe. I get it. It's a roast. That's the spirit of the event. So, for the sake of balance, bring that into the evening. I want to read a list of things that I truly admire about Ovi's personality as a friend. <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way. Yeah! <laughs> um, first, I want to give a hard tell fuck you. <laughs> because you truly suck. Um, but you really can't... Uh, go into a talk about Oe without uh, talking about his proud tradition as a, a student athlete, uh, both at, at Tribury Academy and at uh, the University of Southern Maine. So, as some of you may or may not have heard a thousand fucking times, uh, Oe was on the track team. So, <laughs> words can only carry so much, so here's the number. Fifteen feet five inches. Big number. For those of you who don't know the significance of that number, that's the cumulative length of all the dicks always sucked on the track. <laughs> five inches. Uh, five inches. <laughs> another, thing, uh, fucking hair. It's so long. Check out Oe's Sick flow, bro. I've heard it. Everyone's fucking heard it. We all have to see it all the time. Like, dude, you got fucking long hair. But all the ladies can tell you what really matters, it's not the fucking length. It's the girth. Another true fact, a lot of opinions going on here. Oh, his dick, four and a half inches. <laughs> but it's got a sweet yaw, bro. Hey, <laughs> but, but seriously, oh, he's one of the better looking friends I have. It looks like, I, I don't know, like, like Fabio sur survived an abortion or something. <laughs> Not cool, or something nasty. Um, no, but really, um, you know, talk about Oe a lot. I, I don't get a chance to, to see my friends all the time. And I, I miss Oe when he's gone, and you know, occasionally Oe comes up in the bedroom. So, because you're married. Out of, uh, it's a, that's exactly why. It's because you're married. So, um, yeah, but I, you know, I was saying, uh, out, of, out of all the friends I have, Oe would be probably the first one I, I would want to have a three-way with. That's just, it's honest conversation. I mean, so like, you know, the way I picture it, like, you know, I'm going to be doing my thing, and, and then, then it's me, Oe, and his little brother. <laughs> 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 
Slack, but uh, she did want me to say on her behalf, um, and I quote, uh, I wouldn't fuck that dog with someone else's cunt. <laughs> like, look, take it easy. I mean, like, it's his fucking birthday. I'm not a bad guy. And um, also, the privilege, uh, I spoke with uh, Mr. Eric Peterson. Uh, like, oh! And, and, um, He's like, I don't, I don't know, dude. Like, just, just talk about how his dad had like multiple wives. That weird fucking religious cult they had up on the mountain. Or I, I didn't want to go there. I don't know if you guys know about that shit, but like, sorry, so like, that's yeah, not really related. No, no. Yeah. Um, true, true story, though, like actual true story. Um, on uh, my, my little brother's uh, Snapchat the other day. Uh, so some girl had gone to uh, to Portland and, and posted one of these Snapchat feeds and had gone to Whole Foods and, and snapped a picture of Oe uh, with a caption uh, that said uh, "Babe City." And then it's Oe like fucking <laughs> chilling out. I have the picture. Like I'll, I'll put it up later. Fucking not the first time Oe's garnered some unwanted attention at Whole Foods. I think we all remember uh, the little baker boy incident. <laughs> But no, really, man, I, like, you know, we're all proud of you, you've been doing some good shit. Um, I, again, I, going back to the student-athlete thing, like, I mean, you could have skipped it better. You spent, like, fucking six years in college. The only thing I have to show for it is, like, a fourth-place medal from the Little Eastern Conference and 40 grand in debt. He didn't even climb Gamut Peak. He, he, he was out in uh, Wyoming for like fucking two weeks. Like nobody saw it. No pictures. Of him. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Kids been lying to us for years. He thinks just because he has a fucking six pack and extra bone, extra bone, show it. Show the bone. Show the bone. Show the bone. Show it, baby. No. He, <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't no. do it. This kid hasn't done like half the shit he claims to. He doesn't even work at Whole Foods. Where's the fucking Trader Joe's? <laughs> Seriously, man, do you have anything to say for yourself? After that? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Once again, instead of making out with Phoebe. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, I won't say I'm like a man, I'm sorry, but I'm a man of my word. Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck you, Ryan. Hey! Yeah! Oh! Yeah! 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 Uh, we're gonna take a 15 minute break so I don't want to be in the woods and in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Richard, explain. Yep. Get fired up. In fact, that was a direct quote earlier today, too. Get vocal about it, he says. Get vocal about it. <laughs> Selling him in the other room at his own house. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sick. No fear with this guy. No fear. On or off the court. <laughs> On or off the fucking rock face. <laughs> the wave. In or out of the ocean. <laughs> I take that back. He is fearful. When I was younger, we were all younger. <laughs> Horror movies. Some people love them. This guy. Ooh. <laughs> Me and Rick get into some fucking like wrong turn type shit, some inbred shit, some fucked up shit. And oh, he would be there like, 
God, he'd be fucking amped up. Talk about fired up. And so, uh, so, speaking of shit in his pants, he reminds me of, he reminds me, in many ways he reminds me of, uh, in not many ways, actually, in one particular fucking way, he reminds me of my brother, my own brother. Yachty Pippen. <laughs> I, I love them both. And so, Scotty Pippen, they would both have, I would, uh, they would both do the same thing, and it would be generating, um, <laughs> generating farts through their, um, butthole. And so, oh, his approach was like, if he was, if he was a little different than my brother, he'd be on all fours. And it was, it was a gag, and a goof and a spoof, or younger. And he'd just like, he'd like, you know, arch his fucking back and like, breathe. Sphinx! <laughs> with his asshole, <laughs> and then release, and it was like, oh. like, like. And it's not like it was naked, or I wish it was, but it, was, it wasn't it was naked or anything, it was just, like, you know, it was rant, you know, whatever. Scotty would be, a, I mean, Scott showed me this, he'd be on his back with his legs over his fucking head, like, Scotty's not even here to defend so I'm bloody, bud. <laughs> But, um, so let's get into the shit mess. Yeah. Yeah. Shit mess. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I wrote some shit down. Bad, Your own hype man already said that. <laughs> Woo! 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 Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Love to see him get himself fired up. Good copy, um, <laughs> The extra bone helps with the rock climb. I've seen him, the extra bone, you know, protrudes in such a spot where you, you can climb the face of a fucking burly rock and fucking Notch it in, the bone. <laughs> Make the extra fucking 512B climb to the summit again, like Gannett Peak, which Terry talked about. Love you, Terry. Um, he is a Scandinavian fucking god of a bro. Uh, one time I was having an epic, epic, epic snowball fight. Freiburg Academy, this is cutting deep, it's not that deep, but it's fucked up. So, we're fucking throwing fucking snowball. Whew, bunch of people on the other side of the fucking parking lot. Boom, 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 boom. Throw us all Fucking Johnny Candela. <laughs> Motherfucker. Somebody got hit. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's a fucking snowball. <laughs> No, 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 no. Somebody got hit with a car. <laughs> did it on purpose. He, he, he wasn't the one that got hit either. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Excellent fucking display of collegiate athleticism. Of course, and I say off, on and off the court, on and off the ocean, fucking on and off the rock face, on and off the Surfing. fucking track that you run towards the fucking the pole pole, what do they call it? What do they call the track? <laughs> the fucking runway. <laughs> he's taking off, he's just, he's got his own runway. <laughs> Upon which he holds records. He holds Woo! records on his own runway, jumping over the ship Fucking with a long ass pole like a boss hoss. Drink it. <laughs> Get to the point. Um, it has nothing to do with that. So, but he also eats shit a lot. <laughs> when he was younger, let's list them off. You guys have all heard it. Knee to the face, huge ski jump, boom. <laughs> Best one personally. Ice skating. Ice oh, yeah. fucking skating. <laughs> With the hockey stick above. Skating along. You can't put your shit anywhere. Like, you can't. <laughs> to the face. <laughs> tooth through the lip. Might have lost a tooth. I'm confused with all the injuries. Um, blowing up a balloon at the top of a staircase. True story. Passes out. Eat shit down the staircase. Am I wrong? Yes. Thank you. I'm 
Let's go. <laughs> um, so he's got so he's got Charlie, and he's got whoever else is on the scene. Thought it would be a good idea to fucking bash open a battery with whatever sort of fucking instrument that they bash batteries with, and he gets battery acid in his eyeball, straight up and down. So he does his shit. He holds these records, and it's awesome surfing. He's awesome boy, and I love him. And he generates the farts like a boss, and it's tight. But he eats shit. Once you get up here, you get way more comfortable. It's funny, cool. Um, Jesus almighty. So yeah, hits a girl with a car, quads bursting through his shorts. And last but, you know, he fucking shits his pants during the horror movies. And got no fear, but he's got the horror movie shit pissed. Um, well, as of lately, I don't know if I'll be able to look him in his eye because he looks so much like his beautiful, simply awesome younger brother, Soul, <laughs> who I love as well. I love the whole family. And uh, happy birthday, bud. <laughs> Okay, so speaking of Louis losing his virginity to teachers, someone else, someone else mentioned that a while ago. I don't believe it, but if it were true, this ties in very well to the next person back to perform. Mr. Alex Mitchell, everybody. Teacher. Hey. <laughs> I'm in uh, the highest form of academia and scholarliness. I've composed a poem that I'd like to read to you all tonight. Twenty-six years ago today, a warrior from the stars was cast down to earth in an orgasmic flash of light. <laughs> His conception was confused for a meteor shower, but the result was something much more rare and more beautiful still. And now he walks among us in casual stride, as if trying to blend in among the earthlings he once looked over from the night sky. <laughs> You see, hidden behind those iron-clad dragon shoulders and under those locks of gold and glory is a blazing soul that baffles the laws of nature. The gods of Olympus would be jealous that a mortal man may strut with such prowess upon the earth like it was created just for him. They would smite him if they could, but of course their tricks only work on the weak, and this Magnificent specimen will not be thwarted. No, not by vengeful gods, roaring riptides, or colliding fault lines. He needs no hammer or silver sword. His hands themselves could crush mountains, strip a man of his limbs, or gently brush back his hair behind his ears. Yes, with those boa constrictor arms, he could subdue the most savage beast with those legs, loaded shotgun barrels, he defies gravity, mocking the boundaries so clear to most humans. Warrior, conqueror, model of a man, fine-tuned sinews wrapped in pristine, hairless skin, 
save for the strands of golden honey we draped over that masculine face. So precise in all its angles, like a totem to the shape of the world itself. A geometric masterpiece that rivals the constellations in both mystery and awe. Nice! Oh, you're fucking far out! And us, here, are blessed to bear the witness to the pinnacle of shape and form before us. Let us be here to tell the tale, to record for future generations the potential that lies within all of us, to stand out among the many, to unshackle ourselves from our own limitations, to pioneer new realms of physical beauty, <laughs> to march triumphantly into the world, letting the dust oh, of a wait. thousand oh, gyms settle in the setting sun behind us. <laughs> but let us also beware, for slowly but surely, Time catches up on all of us. And the space we've taken up here will be replaced with vibrations new and unknown. Furious and foreign, like angry immigrants from a distant galaxy, cast here against their will to revel in the waste we've made. We will wither out from this plane one day, and all that was man-made will be buried like the men themselves, and the gusto with which we once walked on the earth will be but ripples in space with no constraints and no illusions on physical permanence. <laughs> so let us attend not to perfecting our shape, nor the appearance that we portray in the world. Let us not pass, clutching our most prized possessions that brought us such glory here in this world. Instead, let us admire the heart of the warrior. The bravery with which we face the toils of physical existence. Let us praise the victors who win the battle within themselves. The arrow that the hunter shoots from his heart into the void of space, hoping it will land among kindred spirits, is meant to connect the dots between this world and the next where all is one, each of us part of the story. And though we may be heroes in our own tales, we are but whispers in the wind, blowing through the sails of this cosmic vessel. Go, poet! And lucky are we to keep such company, the star child by our side, his barbaric cry of triumph, coaxing us on into the endless night. Other than injuries, 
<laughs> so it's nice to see that he can actually do something. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm gonna go to carpentry school in Boston. I was like, oh my god, you're gonna lose an arm? <laughs> no, 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 you should do that. <laughs> Anyone want to take bets on when he's gonna lose his sobriety? Uh, yeah, he kind of ruined that joke, because yesterday, I had the show planned, and he was like, yesterday, he's like, oh, I'm going to drink a beer tomorrow. I'm like, fuck, I'm still doing this one joke that I had about you. <laughs> but Yvette is also Yvette's birthday, where is she? It is. So there's such a strong spotlight. Yvette's birthday was the other day. Did Oe actually remember it this year? Did you do anything for him? So I remember last year, it was a little... A little subpar. It might make this next joke a little bit better. So, um, Yvette and I were on the beach the other day while always surfing in the distance. I can't even make that up. This is a real story. <laughs> that actually happened. And she was like, oh, you talked about how you want to have a threesome. <laughs> You know, we've got some hip ladies, so she was like, really? What's that about? Like, who would the other lady be? Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Like, no, no, I don't think you're understanding. <laughs> I was talking about this with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the boys. And, she, so, and then, like, is it cool if I do it with them? Not, you're not involved, and she's like, thank God, I'm a one in the whole of the time kind of girl. <laughs> she was like, what's that mean? And I don't get that. <laughs> All at once. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, nailed it. Woo! Yes! But I mean, how hard is it to do a gay joke? What a guy who's basically named after a man who is best known for his wardrobe accessories. Right? <laughs> oh, you know that guy Orion? Oh, you mean the really great hunter? <laughs> oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah. Orion, the hunter. <laughs> yeah, could that guy wear a belt, so <laughs> his pants were always just up, and he never down, all the way up there. <laughs> that was the weak part of my... Shut up, thank you. Oh. <laughs> 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 Celestial joke. <laughs> All right. Well, this last part, I have to say, is my biggest fuck you to Orion. <laughs> and I know there are a lot of ladies here, so maybe you will understand. Yeah. But once, <laughs> once you get to a certain age, I know more or less, maybe it's not with you. When you get to a certain age, people are like, why aren't you married? Why don't you have kids? And my mom can be like that a little bit. And she's like, oh, uh, well, this person's having a baby, but I don't worry about you. I'm just like, no, she can't have kids yet. It's not time. <laughs> and my mom and I should be talking about that at all then. <laughs> but then we were on a vacation. I was at Ian's family reunion, actually. I, I have to give a little bit of backstory so you can understand how the math goes when you get to certain okay. age as a woman. It's like, don't do math. But then when you get to a certain age, it's like, start doing the math. Because you are only fertile for so long, so just start oh, thinking about how long it can last. <laughs> so, the biggest point, so my mom just suddenly say things, such as my mom, whatever. But then we were on vacation, in a family reunion, a four-year-old, we were hanging out in the pool. She was like, oh, is that your boyfriend? I was like, who's that? Is that your brother? Sorry, I messed it up. <laughs> is, that your brother? is that your brother? And I was like, no, that's my boyfriend, Ian. She's like, your husband? And I was like, oh, kind of, it's pretty much, yes. She was like, oh, did you have a wedding? I was like, no, I haven't had a wedding. <laughs> She's like, you're, ma you're not married? I'm like, no, I'm not married. She's like, do you have any kids? But the real time that I felt the biological clock start ticking, I can name the exact time. It was a Friday. It was the first Friday of the month, to be exact. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It was a time, I feel like some of you may remember. It was a time 
that? When <laughs> you just got a beautiful, beautiful child, curly blonde hair, darling baby boy. <laughs> and at one point, oh, you just put him up on his shoulder. Oh, shit. Can we bring a picture up on the screen? Can we? Oh, we shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, just imagine in your mind, imagine in your mind, <laughs> Oli holding a tiny Oli, three years old. <laughs> oh, on her. Yeah. He's wearing a beanie. This tiny child is wearing a beanie. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. So cute. Uh, it's, 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 it's just like I just felt like an egg drop at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all the other ladies who were there, you could have used that to do. It was just like you just watched all the ladies like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs>
gonna end up with this shit I write down for you. Cause I didn't care to memorize it. <laughs> Here we go. Number one. Therapy's helping. 